G'day viewers, welcome to another uh, learning battle report. Uh, I'm going to try and learn how to play uh, the new LaSalle version 2 rules. So I've printed out, if you're a veteran player, all you need is this quick reference sheet apparently, but I've printed out the extra reference sheet. Uh, it's not my first uh, Napoleonic rules. I've uh, played a lot of different uh, Napoleonic rules over the years. And this is just a small sample. And they're all good. They all have their good points and bad points. Some are more detailed than others. Some are lacking detail. But uh, I'm going to give LaSalle a try because I am a chronic Napoleonic rules purchaser, I guess. And my mates groan whenever I come up with a new set of Napoleonic rules to try. So we're going to give LaSalle a try. This is the uh, the table I've set up. Pretty simple. A village to capture. Three bits of woods. Uh, some roads. There's a big hill in the middle. You probably can't see it from that angle. And just a simple scenario. And I'll probably, I think I've got about 170 points roughly each side. So there's a point system. Very basic point system. Um, we'll see how we go. There's my, my, my army list. I'll print it out. But it's pretty simple, and I'll be tracking the uh, the casualties and so on with counters. So let's get started, and I'll come back after deployment. Okay, so this is deployment. So as you can see, let's uh, get the right colours here. So this side is the French. We have one brigade here, and another brigade here with some artillery who have taken the advantage of being positioned on the hill. So things that are unnecessary, as you can see, I've got a skirmish screen out here, but they'll probably get removed because the skirmishing is abstracted in this game. But I'll put them out there just for fun and fancy. And brigade commanders, we don't really need those, but I've just got them to mark where the actual brigades are. So there's one French brigade here of three uh, battalions. And then over this side, there's another couple of battalions and there's a battalion of guard at the back there. But I'll zoom in and show you those in a minute. All right, so that's the French side. And then on the Russian side, uh, there's a brigade of Jaeger here with their skirmishers, um, a battery. The Russian batteries are double width based. And another brigade up here and the little... Uh, little asset of uh, Opal Tini, the uh, Cossacks on foot. Again, I've got the skirmishers out and the brigade commanders just for fun. And the general, there's the, the general for both sides. There's one of the other one, French generals back there. And they're next to the baggage. And they, they the baggage gives, gives you more uh, momentum or pips, if you want to call them. Um, so that's the deployment. And off the table, I will show you the uh, reinforcements. So both sides had to hold one brigade off the table. So in the reinforcements or the status step, we can roll to bring those on. Okay, and so in reserve, the Russians, I mean the French, have got a couple of uh, units of dragoons. So heavy cavalry. I've got a couple of uh, ring-ins in there, but there's their the uh, French reinforcements, and then the Russian reinforcements, they have uh, some Ulans and some Hussars in reserve. So we roll for those in the status step. Okay, let's have a look at a unit, um, a typical unit. So I've got uh, most of the battalions. I've got one old guard battalion, which is the one behind them. I'll show you them in a minute. But let's say this unit here, um, the skirmishes, just ignore those. They're just there for my... Uh, just for show, as a LaSalle unit, this is what a unit card looks like. You can print these out and attach them to the back of your unit, or you can just keep track. There's their strength. So they have a strength of six, and when they get down to two in the yellow area, then they're shaken. They have a skirmish value of three and a resolve of four plus. Uh, they're with 18 points and their infantry, just all that. So, so all that information is those symbols. This symbol here uh, means that they can charge in columns, so in mass col in mass formation. So in the formation that they're in, they don't incur a complication, they call it, an extra pip to charge. 
So that'll come up. I'm learning as I go. All right, so let's have a look at the uh, the old guard behind them. Okay, so then behind them, just to show you what a different unit, there's a unit of old guard, and they have different stats. So have a look at their stats. They, um, similar to the veterans, they have a skirmish value of three. Um, they cost more. They have a better resolve of five plus. They have more hit points, so they have a strength track of seven. And they have an extra symbol here, which is just um, special unit traits. It doesn't mean they're surrendering all the time. It means they rally on a roll of 3+. plus. So I guess you rally on a 4+, plus, so they rally on a 3+. plus. So they cost a little bit more, but they're just a more resilient unit. They have more strength, and uh, they're 5+, plus. their resilience is, resolve is 5+. plus. So that'll come out during the game. So there's a couple of typical units. Okay, so while I'm doing that, I'll have a look at a unit of Dragoons. So these dra Dragoons are held in reserve. Uh, their stats look like this. They have a strength of uh, 6, and that cavalry symbol means they're shock cavalry. So they don't incur a complication when charging in mass formation, and non-shock cavalry suffers a minus 1 combat modifier against it, so they're good versus other cavalry. So let's see if that comes out in the game as well. So there's three typical French units there. Okay, and then for something different, have a look at a... Russian foot battery and it shows you their strength is only two and there's some more information here about uh, their resolve and the num number of dice they throw uh, per base it is for when they're firing a canister uh, a volley they call it in this and when they're firing a bombardment the whole battery would roll that many dice and the Russians have larger uh, bigger batteries as well uh, they have some other special abilities, but I've just got a basic foot battery in this battle. Okay, and so all this information, you can download it from uh, the Honor website. And so, for example, another unit, a more uh, lower level unit, the Opal Chini, so they have less less strength. Um, they'll, they, they'll be shaken when they've only got three hits left. Uh, they have this cross swords, means they're rabble, they can't form squares, and they can only shoot poor volleys. So they only get one dice per base when they're shooting in line formation. They do add a skirmish value, so there's one skirmish on them, but their resolve is only 3+. plus. They only cost 6 points that, but have to be careful because they would count as a unit lost, so we don't want to throw them away for the Russians. So the advance. It is... The momentum phase. Okay, so the first phase is the momentum phase, which is basically pips to move. It requires pips or momentum to be able to move, change formation, charge, fire volleys and things like that. So you have a certain number of resources that you can spend during a turn. Once you've used them all up, that's the end of the turn for you. While you're doing all this, if you do something near the enemy, then they will be able to interrupt you, basically, and they take their turn until they spend all those, until they pass, or if both sides pass, then the turn is over. All right, that's a quick summary. I hope that makes sense, but let's look at the momentum. Hopefully it'll come out as we go through the game. All right, so the French, let's do the French first. They've got two brigades. So that gives them one momentum, one for each brigade, and they have some baggage back here, so they get two for the baggage. So they're on four momentum. One, one for each brigade, two for the baggage. If we were playing the advanced rules, they could have an aid to camp, which you pay points for, which gives them an extra momentum. And the general can generate momentum now. He can add an extra D3, or he can uh, save himself for the intervention phase. And in the basic game, base, basically, he gets to get someone to change formation. So the French will not do that. They will go for extra momentum. So they get D3 momentum. Oh, great. They get another one. So it puts them on to five. And then they may get more momentum when we get up to the skirmish phase. Okay, so the French... The French are on five momentum. Put that there for them. Okay, and then the Russians, who will be in red. So the Russians have got two brigades on the table, so that gives them two. 
Uh, plus they've got baggage, so they've got four. Plus they'll roll, so they'll roll to see for their general, gives them D3 extra. And they get an extra two. So the Russians are on six. So the French have five and the Russians have six momentum. Right, so next is the skirmish phase. Step two, the skirmish phase. Okay, so in the skirmish phase, it's abstracted. We're not really using the skirmishes that are on the table. So I've just got these skirmishes on there just for show. I'll take them off when they get in the way. So basically what's going to happen is both sides add up their skirmishing value for their army. And that depends on all the different types of units that they have in their army. And as long as they haven't formed square or garrisoned a town, I think, they will generate skirmish points. So depending on, it has to have that symbol there with the, the soldier with the yellow number next to them. So that's their skirmish value. So you work out the skirmish value for your army. It doesn't change much unless units you know, change formation. Skirmish value for the army. Roll that number of dice and any sixes give you a skirmish hit. And whoever wins the skirmish battle has rolls the most sixes, wins the skirmish battle. Uh, then they have the skirmish advantage. So if they have an advantage by two or more, then they get an extra uh, momentum point, so an extra pip. And whoever wins the skirmish battle the, has the, uh, the skirmish advantage. They get to go first. They'll be the active player starting off first. Okay, so let's do the skirmish roll. Okay, so I've added up all the skirmish value for both armies, and I've got that many dice. So the red ones are the Russians and the blue ones are the French. The French have 18 skirmish points and the Russians have got 16. So the Russians have some Jaeger, which has helped them out there. Plus the Opal Chini had, had a skirmish value. Cossacks help as well. So I'm going to roll these dice and then the num we're looking for sixes for each side. Well, and then we can pick out the sixes. So the Russians or oh, the French. French have got two, Russians three, French three. Oh, the French have got another couple there. So the French have got five. I can't see any more. So front five to three. So the French win the uh, skirmish advantage. So they get an extra, uh, an extra momentum. So they've got six. And so they because they won by two. And they will be going first. So the French will be going first. Both sides have got six momentum. So it's going to keep those dice in there. Unless units change formation. I guess I won't be needing um, to change that number of dice. Unless they change into square or garrison the town, I think, or whatever. So that's the skirmish phase. After all that, they both end up with six momentum each. And the French are going first. Oh, yes. I must do something. It is the intervention phase. Okay, so my first intervention phase, but there's nothing going to happen. Since the both generals have already been used, so they're not going to take any part in directly uh, assisting any units. But in the advanced rules, there are some uh, other options that you can choose, and both sides can choose an extra option for their general. But basically, they can make an emergency um, formation change under the basic rules. But seeing as both generals have used their influence to gather more momentum, then they don't do anything in the intervention phase. Interesting. We'll see if that comes up later on. Here is a time for action. It is the orders phase. Okay, so bear with me for the first turn. It's going to be very slow, probably. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Both sides have got um, six momentum each, and the French are going first. And so the orders are up here. If you look at the quick reference sheet, there's two general types of categories of orders. Global orders, which affect the whole table for your force, or force orders, which only affect a single brigade. As far as I can see, Global orders uh, change formation, so you want anybody to change formation, you spend a momentum, and 
they will change formation. You can change formation, you can move, but you can't do two things in a turn. So a unit can't move twice or change formation twice, but you can do it in any order. And sometimes before and after the enemy moves. So that's where the interaction will come in. The red column here shows you that when the enemy can interrupt. So if uh, you do something near the enemy within four base widths, I'll show you that in a minute, um, then you can interrupt. If someone's firing a bombard, so if they're shooting their artillery, then you can't interrupt. You can never. But if someone's shooting a volley, it means they're up close and shooting, then you can always interrupt. So after they finish their order, you can say, I'm going to have my go now. Spend a momentum and do what you want to do. So I'll see how this goes. Playing solo is going to be a bit difficult. We'll have to role play it a bit. We'll see what happens. So that's the orders and the complications just means it's going to take an extra momentum or an extra pip if somebody's moving through another unit for interpenetration or if they're charging or if they're in difficult ground or they're shaken and so on. So I'm bound to make a few mistakes, so please let me know in the comments below if I do as I'm going. But I'm learning and I'm sure we'll come up with the rest of the table as we go. So let's let's begin. And we'll start with the, the French. And their first order will be, oh, well, I suppose I should start moving. So I'll spend a uh, momentum to start moving. So I'll just turn that down to a five so you can see what I've got. So I've got five. And I'm doing a global order. No, it's a movement order. So it's a four. So I pick one brigade and then those guys can move. Now, I'm so green, I don't even know how fast they can move. I've read the rules, and I know that when you get close, when you're within, I think it's four base widths, so when you're within that distance of the enemy, then you're limited to your reduced movement. So when you get up close, things uh, start to get a bit more complicated. But uh, a mass can move six. So I happen to have a six here. And... This is going to incur, because I'm going to be moving this battalion, is going to move into the village and claim the objective. They can move six. You know, the terrain doesn't slow them down, which seems odd, but it incurs a complication. So let me know if I've got that wrong. So difficult terrain, movement. So they move six. They don't get slowed down. So basically what they're going to do is move... And I'm just going to get them into the town. They're going to garrison. So it'll be a formation change to get them to uh, garrison the village. I'm just going to take those skirmishes off. They're already in the way. Take them out of the way. So I'm giving a movement to this brigade. And it's a complication. So it's going to cost me an extra momentum because I moved into the terrain. So it's going to cost me two. All right, then the other battalions. This one's moving up through the woods as well so i've already paid for the complication they've moved up next to the town and i know that i've moved all those units if i come back and try and move them again you can uh, let me know okay so that's them so they've moved up to take the town that's cost me two momentum for that force, which is that brigade, that brigade only is the only the only unit that gets affected by that. All right, so next I want to do a change formation, which is a global a global order. Yeah, it's a global order change formation, and if I'm in difficult terrain, it's going to incur a complication. So it's going to cost me two because I want this unit to garrison that. So It'll cost me two. I'm already down to two momentum. So what's going to happen is this brig uh, this battalion is going to garrison the village and win the battle for. Speaking as the French player for the moment. So I'll just take that building out and I can put a base facing out out each facing, I assume. Now I'm assuming this. I've read something about it, but I'll just put and base is facing out, each facing. So that battalion has garrisoned the village. Let me know if you think that's correct or not. And that's an objective is the village. We know that's an objective. 
there's no one else that I want to change formation. Maybe I could make change formation for these guys. Um, but get those, one of those units out into line. Let's do that as well. Let's defend that. So I'm going to form line out this way. So now that unit changed formation. They did it in the difficult terrain, but I've already paid a momentum for the difficult terrain because I was garrisoning the village. I think that is correct. So I may as well get those guys to move out into line as well. Then they've got a bit, little bit more firepower for later on. Okay, so the French are going to spend one momentum to uh, fire a long-range bombardment which is a 24 baits with uh, range, so they have plenty of range to get to them. And they get uh, four dice, needing fours to hit the poor old Opal Chini there. And they get two hits. Opal Chini's resolve is three plus, so three plus will turn these into actual, actual hits, so two. So they've taken two. So I've just got these dials, so I'll just put a two hits on them. They can try and rally those off later on. Okay, so the French artillery has fired. They are smoked up. The Opalcini, uh, they took... I hope I pronounced it. There's probably some Russian pronunciation for that. But they've taken uh, two actual hits. They will be can attempt to rally those off, and we'll do that when we uh, give an order later on. We'll see what happens there. So the French have still got one uh, momentum point left. They could use that up for another movement for this other brigade, or they could pass. And what they're going to do is they're going to pass, and that will hand the turn over to the Russians. So the Russians have got six momentum to spend. Okay, so the first thing the Russians are going to do is uh, spend one momentum to fire a bombard which can't be interrupted. So they will shoot and they get they get five dice for a Russian battery. And they hit on a four plus, I think. Where are you? Put battery five dice hit on a four plus. But they do have cover. So it shifts up by one. I mean down by one. Target has cover. So they hit on fives. So they get five dice hitting on fives and from the center they've got 45 degrees so they can um, shoot at them it's just across off the base so yeah they're square bases so needing fives to hit them let's see how they go and that's going to cost them one momentum oh, no hits unsuccessful shooting from the battery there and so the Russian battery has fired them up there okay uh, the battery's fired that's that they've got five momentum left well they may as well start doing a a force order and start doing some movement and they could do a rally, would attempt to rally in a minute on the Opal Chini, see what happens there. But first thing they're going to do is probably um, order the Jaegers to start moving up onto the village there. Okay, now if they have to do an interpenetration, then it incurs a complication. So the movement's pretty simple. You just move up, and now if this moves to within four of the enemy they can interrupt so they're going to stop just outside four of the village which doesn't allow them to interrupt and doesn't bring them into volley range or anything like that so they're just going to move up and i'm removing my skirmishes from the the table so the jaeger are moving up just Artillery. outside four of the so it's going to incur a complication so they're going to move up as well the russians are on the attack now they've seen the french have taken the village they've masked their artillery there but 
I'm going to get to move them again before I shoot if I want to. And so that's the, the Jaeger Brigade has moved up. No interruptions possible. Okay, so that cost me two momentum because there was a complication as they interpenetrated the artillery. Let me know if I've got that right or not. Right, so the next uh, will be another movement for the Musketeer Battalion here, but let's let's do a rally. The Opal Tuny have taken two hits there, so we'll do a rally. A rally cost one, and there's no complication on it. Rally, no complication, so we're down to three. And on a rally, you can roll a number of dice for the number of hits. Yep, that's right. So the Opal Tuny have got two hits on them. I don't know if you can read that or not, but they've got two hits on them. So I roll two dice. And a four plus, it's it's a successful rally. So, and if they fail it, then it's a permanent hit. So they failed one and passed one. Okay, so they removed, they had two disruption on them. They removed one and one turned into a permanent casualty. So they've taken one hit. And they have a strength of, well, they got a strength of five. So they're a little bit fragile, those guys. Okay, so the Russians have got three momentum left. They're going to be moving those musketeers. It's going to cost one for the force order and another one because of the complication. So they end up with one momentum left. The complication is that they are going to be moving through the woods. So it doesn't slow them down, but it just costs you more orders to move them. And that's as far as I can see it. I'll remove my silly skirmish screen because... They're not going to take any part in the battle except look good. Um, you could use them to denote who's moved and so on. So they do have the the French uh, brigade in front of them there. So what they're going to do, they can wheel and so on. They're going to move up. So this unit's going to, as long as you know part of any base moves more than... The movement allowance so i've got plenty of movement to go up there so they've moved up i am with my brigade commander just so that i know where they are and so on and that leaves the both sides with one uh momentum left okay so that's the situation at the moment so the uh russian brigade has moved up here in mass and my plan is for those guys to move out into line I could hand over the initiative to the French, but the French could pass as well, and then nobody would get to move. So the Russians are going to spend their last momentum to do a global order, which is a change formation. Just form a line around them. So these guys are going to form line. These guys will form line. These guys will form line as well. So now the Russians have moved up and they've taken a fairly defensive position there in line with more firepower to uh, hold that position and challenge the French on that hill. Okay, so there they are all deployed out into line. And so that's the end for the Russians. The Russians don't have any more momentum, so it's over to the French. Okay, so the French seeing that the Russians have deployed out there they could move up and get ready for next turn to charge them or cop some volleys and so on. But it may not be a good idea. I'm not sure how the game works in that regard. But, um, well, we could maybe have some uh, combat pretty soon. Okay, so this is going to be pretty much the end of the orders phase. The French are going to use their one momentum that they have left. And the order will be a force order for this brigade, and they're going to be doing movement. Now you can't charge, the, the maximum charge distance that you can do is four base widths, so you'd have to be this close to be able to charge. Even though they have a movement of six, when you get near the enemy, your movement gets reduced back down to one, or whatever you've got left, or whichever is less. So they're going to be moving, and let's... Uh, Let's not muck about. Now, if I move through these woods, it's going to cause a complication. So 
this battalion. It has a movement of six, but once it gets within four of the enemy, its movement will be reduced to one. Rule. All right, so when they get up to here, they still have two left, but because they're with near the enemy, their movement is reduced to one. So they're going to move up to there. So now they're within four of the enemy. They've moved up. Now, the whole brigade can move, but if I move through the woods, it's going to cause a complication. So these guys are going to wheel and then move. And as long as they stay outside four, then they can move their full movement. So they're going to move up to there. And then the guard, well, they, they're going to move up. They're not going to get shot by artillery and have bounce through and so on. So they're going to move in just this side of the woods so it doesn't incur a complication. We'll keep them safe for now. All right, keep them all within four of each other, maintains the, the formation. And that's the end of the orders phase. Okay, so in summary, you can see that the... Uh, the French have taken the town, uh, the Jaeger brigade has moved up, the artillery had a shot at the town and, and missed, the Albertini took some hits and rallied one off, they've got one permanent loss, the Musketeer brigade has moved up and formed a line here, and then the French columns have moved off the hill, the French artillery has been firing. So that's a summary of the first turn. So then we go into the last uh, phase. It's now the status phase. Check for victory too. Okay, so we've made it to the status phase. So the first step is the reinforcement step. So both sides roll for their reinforcements. And you roll a number of dice equal to the turn number. Normally it's on a six. But in this scenario, it's on a five or six. They receive their reinforcements. So we'll do the reinforcements. I'll roll simultaneously. The red dice is the uh, Russians. And so on a five plus, the cavalry will arrive. Huzzah! Let's see. All right. So the Russian cavalry have arrived. Next turn, the French will get to roll two dice. Okay, so the Russians logically have uh, placed their cavalry on their right flank to aid in the assault on the town. So the Uhlans and the Hussars deployed on the right flank um, to help the Jaegers take the town because the town is the main objective. If the cavalry can keep these guys honest here, these infantry honest, then the Jaeger might have a chance of taking back the town. But the French still have their Dragoons in reserve, so that'll be interesting where they come on. So overall, that's a, a summary for the first turn. Uh, in the rest of the uh, status phase, we do the marker step, remove any markers that might be on the table, so smoke, yes, and things like that. And uh, check for victory. Well, nobody's lost a unit or lost the town or anything yet. So that would be the end of turn one. So if you've made it this far, well done. And we'll see what happens in uh, turn two, where things are going to start to get interesting. So please let me know if I've made any mistakes. And I will press on. I'll release this uh, video as turn one. And um, check back later. And I'll have turn two and beyond up. And you can see if I've made any mistakes while I'm still learning. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.